Well, what's up guys? So for many years now, I have been using an old iPhone as the main GPS device on my motorcycles. Originally, it was just the phone I normally used. It was an iPhone 8, uh, but when it came time to upgrade the phone, I just kept it as a dedicated GPS device. Uh, that's the nice thing with old iPhones or old smartphones in general is they have all the GPS hardware in them and you don't actually need a data plan or a service plan on them to continue to use them. So there are many, many apps out there uh, depending on whether you have an iPhone or an Android. The one that I've used for several years now is called Scenic Motorcycle Navigation or something along those lines. I'll throw a link to it down in the description. Uh, but it's a fantastic app right out of the box. It's a free app and it's full featured. Uh, basically, you get to try out all of the premium features uh, because when you download it and you create an account, you start with, at the time, it was 20 credits. And so you could use those credits to do various things, um, to, use all the, to try out all the premium features, uh, such as downloading offline maps or a turn-by-turn -turn navigation or importing a GPX file or you know, various things. And then occasionally, um, usually around the holiday time, they will run a sale. And so you can get a lifetime premium membership. Uh, it's a one-time charge for like, I think I bought it when it was on sale for 60 bucks. I think normally it's around 90. Um, but the app is on its third version, uh, version 3.0 right now. And uh, it's been great. Uh, I like it because you can import GPX tracks and just follow the line, uh, which is really helpful when I run a lot of the dual sport routes, uh, because sometimes it's not actually a road that you're going on. Recently, a friend of mine was selling an iPhone 8 Plus. It was the rose gold color, but I decided rose gold is fine with me. I'll have it in a case and it's a bigger screen for me to look at. So let me show you what I got. So this is the holder that I made uh, probably three or four years ago. <clears throat> and it's just made out of some thin wall PVC uh, that's used in like central vacuum systems. And so I just cut a length of pipe and then slid it down the middle and threw it in a old toaster oven just to warm it up to about 300 degrees. And then I pressed it flat just with a, a piece of plywood and let it cool down. And so then I had a nice flat sheet to start with. And then I just traced out the shape how I wanted it and used a little heat gun and just bent the little wings and the little snap closure. But this is for an old iPhone 8 standard and I upgraded to the iPhone 8 Plus for my GPS device. And you can see it is too narrow and too short for this bigger screen. So I need to remake that. And I know some of you are probably thinking, man, you just have your phone hanging out there out in the wind. Um, normally I run a the $6 trash can fairing. Uh, this one's getting a little beat up. And so I'm gonna remake that too, or attempt to. Uh, I may end up putting this one back on, but uh, the Velcro is starting to come loose and I figured now would be a time to remake it. So, okay. Several years ago, I ordered this 12 inch by 12 inch piece of 060 uh, black Kydex. This has been in my toolbox um, and black will look a little better than white. So this is what I'm gonna use because this is uh, a thermoplastic that can just be heated and bent. And Kydex is not super toxic like PVC is. So this is actually safer as well. Um, the other thing is you can use just a standard cheapy um, heat gun. You can also get some little uh, adapters that fit on here that make it into like a really narrow focus of heat. Um, that would probably be preferred. So, yeah. so here's how I um, handle wireless charging. So um, this is just components that I removed from just a super cheap like five or ten dollar uh, wireless charger that you get from you know if you've ever been to Menards they've got that little specialty junk selection of items right when you walk in the door oftentimes you'll find some like mobile phone devices uh, this was one of them so um, basically you just take apart the housing and what you'll find inside is a flat coil of wire uh, with a ferrite disc behind it and those usually just attach to a circuit board. And so um, to make this somewhat waterproof, because this coil of wire, you know, nothing's going to hurt that. Um, to make this somewhat waterproof, I did add some wire and it comes around and the original circuit is inside of this large piece of heat shrink. Um, so where these wires were originally soldered to the board, 
I've just extended them with some wiring and um, attached, put, put the circuit board inside this heat shrink, uh, filled it with some hot glue, and then heat shrinked it closed. So that's all watertight in there. Um, and then this is just a USB cable. So, so wireless charger is plugged in. And just so I can get an even distance, I'm just gonna set up two pencils here. And then we can see phone is at 90%. And so we'll just set it down over that. And you can see it's charging. And so there's a, a pretty good gap under there so it doesn't have to be super close. Um, so if you wanna include incorporate wireless charging into your mount, uh, this is an easy, fairly inexpensive way to do it. But I went ahead and drilled the rivets out on the other one just so I could kind of use it as a reference. Um, and if I am going to put this coil in there, um, I need to figure out how deep I want to make these little bins. Um, now this coil, I'll probably just attach it with some double-sided tape, but it's not very thick. Um, eighth inch absolutely maximum. So really that's all the little um, indentation that you need is whatever the thickness of the coil, plus maybe a little bit of air gap, um, just so there's no interference issues. So um, when drawing this out, you need to add just a little bit of extra material in, in overall length, just to account for those bins. Um, so I would think an extra you know, three eighths of an inch width should get me plenty. And then I'll just do a real basic outline of the phone. Until I get it bent, but I know I need to leave enough for the tab. And so I'll cut straight across and maybe get my basic shape. Okay, so I've just got some quarter inch ply here and I basically just need to recreate this. So I will get these positioned and glued down and then I can cut the actual kydex out and heat the center section and just press it in there and let it cool. And then after that, I can do the final shaping. Okay, so let's glue together. Let's take this. So razor knife, just score several times and snap it off. So I'm just gonna use the big heat gun to do this initial part. Uh, just because it's gonna require a lot more heat than the little tabs. It's pliable now. And so I should have got another I was ill prepared. So what I'm gonna do so I can start over. <laughs> under that flat so that it can cool flat. And now I need to make a negative that goes in here. Okay, a bit of a reset. First time I didn't have the other end of the mold. Um, so now I'm gonna heat this back up, um, put it kind of in place. Once the middle is soft and pliable, I'll use this piece to force that middle section down, and then I'll come over the top with this piece so that it keeps the wings flat. And this is just like some, I don't know, eighth inch, three sixteenths uh, wood paneling scraps that I had. I didn't account for material thickness. I need to make this a little narrower. Okay, so I spent a lot of time making sure I got the phone centered left and right over this um, recess portion. And then I tried to ensure that I got my, at least one line starting perpendicular to the bend. And then I just kind of mapped out my cut lines. And then I'll probably just go over there to the bandsaw and just cut this shape out. Um, you could probably also easily cut this out with a jigsaw or a jeweler saw or a, um, I mean, honestly, you could probably cut it out with some snips and then trim the edges flush with a razor knife. Okay, so I just have some holes drilled in the corners there. 
and now to the bandsaw. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use to heat just the little tabs on this. Um, so it's just a little hot air gun with a little tiny nozzle on it. I purchased this when I was doing some surface mount electronic stuff. So it's not really necessary. Um, you could use, you know, a more traditional heat gun. You would just need to figure out a way to focus the heat on just the little area that you needed to heat. And so I left it a little long. But I'm just going to let this cool in this position. And so because these side pieces don't really need to hold the phone in, they just keep it from sliding side to side. They don't really need to wrap over the top of the case. And there you see we've got the two wings folded up. Now for the, for the little thumb tab, um, this needs to kind of wrap forward and then bend back up. So it's a little long and I'd like to get this, this bend right here a little tighter. So I think I'm going to heat that some more, but as it is, you can just push the phone in and then I, think I want to bend my bottom over just a little more as well, but that's pretty close. This tab does cover just a tiny bit of the screen. So I'll probably trim that off um, just so it's only where the case is. Um, but that's pretty much it. Just some little fine tuning. And then of course I need to transfer the holes for mounting it, um, but that's all pretty straightforward. That's pretty much it. Um, I can then take this, figure out how I want to, I'm not sure how I want that, to be yet, um, but then I can just plug this in. And basically any, anytime I turn my key on, this will power on, put the phone in, and it starts charging. All right guys, so I got it uh, mounted up. The old one I just had mounted with two rivets. I've got a hole in each corner of the bracket, but um, the other one held fine for many, many miles with just two rivets. So that's what I just put back in there. Um, I've got the charging coil just stuck on there with a just a, a loop of scotch tape because I don't have any double-sided tape at the moment. Uh, I need to get some, but just to test it out. So we'll throw that in there, turn the key on, and it's charging. So good to go. Um, you can see it's, it's in there pretty stable. Um, there is a tad bit more movement on this than there was on the previous version, but it's because it can kind of rock side to side. I think maybe I should have made this lower tab a little wider. I don't know, but I think it'll be fine. We'll, uh, we'll see how it holds up. So I think that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Um, if you need a custom fit uh, phone holder for your motorcycle, um, this is you know a way you can make one that you know works for you. You can integrate wireless charging. Um, now, there's one thing to consider. Most newer phones Anything newer than an iPhone 8 has uh, image stabilization hardware in the camera device and the vibrations, especially on a DR650, but vibrations on a lot of motorcycles will destroy that uh, image stabilization device and make your camera where it will not be able to focus. So if you're planning on running a phone as a GPS on a motorcycle, make sure it's an older, older style phone. Um, there are some companies out there that are making vibration dampeners for their mounts. Uh, I've seen mixed reviews. Some say they work. Some say they still destroy their phone. So just something to keep in mind. Um, that's why I've stayed with this older phone for so long, just because I don't want to destroy a camera on a newer phone or on my current phone. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you like what I do, uh, give me a thumbs up. And until next time, we'll see you later.